Now we look at the next sequential logic storage device, and that's the SR, the S bar R bar latch, or the S not R not latch. And the motivation for this device is that we're trying to ultimately get to the D flip flop from the cross coupled inverter pair. So if you look back at what we're trying to do here, we we started with this cross coupled feedback loop, and we, we are ultimately going to the D flip flop. Well, we talked about the SR latch right here. So that was the SR latch. And now we're going to go to the S bar R bar latch here. So the S bar R bar latch. And it's an interim step. It actually has some uses by itself in, uh, in when you come to uh, debouncing switches. Uh, so it actually does have an application, but it, it is a stepping stone to get to the, ultimately to get to the D flip flop. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to modify the SR latch so that it operates with, op, it operates with complemented inputs. And that becomes important when you look at the next sequential logic storage device. So can, let's just look at how this operates. So here's the SR, S bar, R bar latch. We are going to actually replace the NOR gates with NAND gates. And we're still going to have this cross-coupled feedback loop. And this time, however, we are going to call this input S bar, and we're going to call this one R bar. And the bar I'm just is the common term that you use for it. It's S bar, R, R bar, S not, R not, latch. Uh, bar just meaning that it's complemented. And this is now going to be the circuit we want to evaluate, so Q and QN. So let's take a look at if this can do what we want it to do. So we need to verify that we can store it. Then we need to verify that we can drive the outputs to a known value. Uh, and then we have, in this situation, we need to evaluate all the codes. And it turns out there's another don't look or don't use state in here. So let's take a look at, let's first, let's first write down the truth table for a NAND gate. So here's the NAND gate. So we got 00011011. And the outputs of a NAND gate are 1110. More importantly about that, whenever I have one and one on the inputs, that's when I get a zero. But if I ever have a zero on the input, then the output is a one. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at the storage state. Okay, so the store state is going to be when I put S bar to a one and I put R bar to a one. So let's just take a look at well, what does this store information? So let's, us, let's put a zero right here and see if it would store a zero. So a zero comes back to here, so I got a zero there. It goes through this, except for the fact that I have a zero on the input to a NAND gate, the output will always be a one, no matter what. So then the one is fed back to here. I have a one and one on the input to a NAND gate. That is this code right here, and it will produce a zero. The zero then reinforces it. We did store it, so we were able to store a zero. So let's go ahead and insert another test case and see if it can store the one. So let me scratch these out as opposed to redrawing it to go a little bit faster. Okay, so now I'm going to come along and I'm going to put a one right there and see if we can store it. Well, a one comes back to here and a one and a one NANDed together produces a zero. And then a zero comes back to here. Well, anytime you have a zero on an, on an input to a NAND gate, it produces a one. That one is then reinforced and you did store it. So this was indeed able to store both a 0 and a 1, and that was when S bar and R bar were both equal to a 1. So this is great. All right, so now let's take a look at the other, let's look at uh, the next situation where, so we'll put S bar is equal to 1, R bar is equal to 1. Let's go down here and let's do the situation where S bar was equal to a 0 and R bar was equal to a 1. Now let's see if what happens in that situation. So I'm going to have cross-coupled NAND gate configuration. And I'm going to have S bar is equal to a 0 and R bar is equal to a 1. Well, we can start off with a situation where anytime you have a 0 on a NAND gate, the output's going to be a 1, no matter what. 
So then the one and the one are fed back. The one comes back down here. One and one into a NAND gate is going to produce the code zero. Zero is fed back here. It didn't really matter because anytime you have a zero in the input of a NAND gate, you have a one. So this is interesting. This would be when you set the device. So this is still Q. But what's interesting about this is that in order to set it, I took S to a zero. So it was the exact opposite of the SR latch. Well, that's why you put S bar on here. So this is the set state, except that you do it when S bar is equal to a zero. So the bar indicates that the bar indicates that set is asserted when it is a zero. But we were able to set it. And Q bar acted as it should, which is the inversion. Okay, so let's take a look at the other situation, which is S bar is equal to one, and R bar is equal to a zero. And we come along, we have our NAND gate here. So we got a NAND gate, boom, NAND gate. And we got our cross-coupled feedback configuration here. And we're gonna have S bar is equal to a one this time. And we're gonna have R bar is equal to a zero this time. So we just start off with the easy case, which is anytime you have a zero on an AND gate, the output is gonna be a one, no matter what, based on this truth table. Okay, that one is fed back to here. You got a one and a one, the output is a zero. Zero is fed back to here. Doesn't really matter, because anytime you have a zero, you got a one. And look what happened. It sits in that state. And this is actually going to be the reset state. So this is Q went to a zero, Q bar or Q naught went to the opposite, which was nice. And this is the reset state, except that I did it by putting R bar is equal to zero. And R bar is equal to zero means that it's asserted when it went to, when the reset line was set to a zero. So that's where I got the inversion. Okay, well this is great, except we have one more condition, and that is gonna be when S bar is equal to zero and R bar is equal to zero. So what happens there? Well, you have your NAND gate, you have your NAND gate, they're cross-coupled, and we know that whenever we have a zero on the input to a NAND gate, the output's gonna be a one. So the output is driven to a one. That's fine, except that we have the same situation as we did with the SR latch. We don't wanna use this state because if I go from this to the store state, the device will go metastable and you have no idea what the final values will be. You know that it will go to one of two states. It'll either go to, the, to Q is equal to one or Q is equal to zero, but you have no idea what it's gonna, what it's gonna do. So you don't wanna use this state. You don't wanna use this, uh, you don't wanna use this particular uh, input code. Okay, so let's summarize the S bar, R bar latch. And this is what we have right here. So this is the truth table for it. So you notice that the don't use is when both inputs are zeros. Both inputs are ones, you store. When S bar is equal to a zero, then you set. And when R bar is equal to a zero, you clear. And then for these cases, for these three situations, the, or excuse me, these three situations right here, the ones that you're gonna use, QN is always the opposite of Q. So this works great. So we did this, the whole reason we did this was to try to invert the polarities of the inputs and get the same type of information. So that's the S bar, R bar latch.